the problem was the SD card. So you have to be careful. Hello guys, welcome to my channel, Daniel here. This is my third video on the new Tarantula Pro 3D printer. I did an unboxing video, a very detailed assembly video. Now it's time to turn this on, see how it performs. We're going to see, first of all, if the assembly is fine, if our motors and limit switches are working properly. Then I'm going to print a few objects. We will look at the print quality and we will compare with the same objects printed on my Ender 3 printer. So let's see how this thing performs. All right, let's turn our printer on and hopefully we won't see some black smoke coming out. I had that once with one of my uh, computers. It was not very funny. So far, so good. We have a screen. The fan of the power up oh, Tarantula Pro. We can hear the fan from the power supply. Marlin here. So far, so good. And our screen, perfect here. So showing here room temperature 26, 27, which is a bit warm these days here. Uh, but the screen looks looks very similar to the Ender 3. I'm just wondering if it's the same company in China making all the control boards for the cheaper uh, 3D printers because it's identical. So we have, let's have a look at the menu first. Info screen, motion, temperature, configuration, attach media, the poly SD card. That's one thing I like about the this printer is that it takes a regular SD card right here. I don't really like a micro SD card like in the Ender 3. So temperature control and uh, motion. Okay, so let's try first to make sure that our, our uh, limit switches are correct and that axes are moving correctly. I'm very confident with my, uh, my connection, so I'm going to do an auto-home. I'm not going to move the axis manually. I know some people do that, but I'll just do an auto-home. I'm sure it's going to work correctly. Auto-home. Perfect. The X is moving. Perfect. The Y is moving. Perfect, and now the Z is going down. A little bit of a vibration noise here, probably coming from this plastic cover here. It's going to make the switch now. Perfect, it's working very well. Now let's test the um, our temperature. Let's go to uh, temperature here and bed. Let's go to 60. I like the screen. Uh, hopefully it will show well on camera. Um, the, uh, the, the display is very sharp. So uh, bed I said 60. Okay, what am I doing? I'm talking and going too high. 60. Let's do the nozzle. 200. I'm going to print PLA. Oh, and we got something new going on over there. I'll show you with my camera. Uh, when I turn the heat on, we got... Uh, let me go back to the info screen. We got a light. Look at that. There is a light at the uh, control, uh, control, the, uh, control board. The power supply is on this side here with the vents facing backward, uh, downwards. And we have over there the control board. So we seem to be okay here. The fans are not turning, which is correct. These fans here are not turning. This fan just started to turn when the nozzle exceeded, I think it was 50 degrees, and the fan here is not working, which is normal. What I want to do before I print, I think, the card that came with the printer has the spool holder. But before I do that, I want to make sure my printer prints correctly. Like I want a nice spool holder. So I'm going to print. Let me move my camera here. I am going to print the famous, Z, not Z, but the famous test cube. And I like this test a lot. I did that on my Ender 3. I have the same parameters now on my Tarantula. So we'll wait for the temperature to go to the, uh, the 
proper settings. We're now at uh, 40 for the bed and 199 for the nozzle. As we wait to uh, level the bed, I am going to feed the uh, PLA. And uh, since we don't have a spool holder, I built this very, as you can see, very high-tech. Very, very high-tech. So I'm going to drive the uh, filament up to there and push it to the nozzle. As you can see, we have black filament coming out of the nozzle. So we seem to be good over there. So we are almost at our set uh, temperatures, like right now. So I'm going to uh, level the bed. So we go to motion. We go to disable steppers. There we go. I think they were disabled already. And now we're going to use a piece of paper of 0.1 millimeter thickness. And uh, remember my Loctite technique here for these uh, screws. So now we know that when we turn, the screw is not turning. So let's turn this until the paper touches the nozzle, just like that. Now let's do this corner. Just like that. And now the back is too tight. Just like that. And now this side. Okay, this looks good. We'll go over there because we adjusted a lot. So we'll, we'll do a, the pass, the same pass, but backwards. A little too much, just like that, just like that, and a little too much over here, just like that. Okay, now we'll try to see if the bed is kind of leveled throughout and I'm quite happy because I saw some reports on the web that some printers don't have a uniform bed and if I go to the middle yeah I have the same friction so I'm good to go now we are ready to print the uh, test cube hopefully uh, this machine is fully compatible with Cura because I like to use Cura so we'll insert the SD card it's like so and then we will go to I guess uh, attach media not totally sure yeah that's it print from media and I have here the uh, calibration cube click on that and start the print yeah so our print has uh, started and I can tell you right now that this is quieter than the Ender 3. I'm going to move my camera a little bit closer here. These fans are still off, as we can see here on the display. They will probably turn on at the, uh, at the second layer. Listen to the noise. working very well so far and my uh, high-tech spool holder seems to be working well also and things uh, continue to work well we can see here the fan animation so the fans are now turning and if we check on our side over there the fans are indeed turning this one and this one so unlike the Ender 3 the Tarantula has uh, two fans to cool down the PLA as it uh, comes out. Speaking of the end of the three, and as we are printing our test cube, this is the front, of course, of the Tarantula, and this is the front of the Ender three. So 
I like the way the Tarantula Pro is designed. Like it looks like a, more like a finished product. Even the Ender 3 Pro is the same, has the same layout as this one. Now let me show you the back. So we have the back here of the Tarantula Pro with that uh, plate covering both the power supply and the control board and the back of the end uh, 3 in comparison looks very very plain uh, and the end of 3 Pro is the same so again I liked what they did here in terms of design for the new Tarantula Pro just a word here about the belt uh, tension uh, if you watch my video on the assembly of this printer we have to pay a lot of attention on the belt tension and you can move the motor here with these screws uh, to the left for the right tension. So look at uh, how the printer is behaving on both sides here and the same on the Y axis over here. And uh, the belts seem to be at the right uh, tension as we can see. I uh, really like this orange and black color scheme. Our uh, test cube is uh, building up, as you can see. Black is not the ideal color, of course, for a test cube, but I want to use the same black right after this to print the uh, spool uh, holder. It's interesting to see here on the display that they show when an SD card is inserted, and we have the same progress bar here that we find on the uh, Ender 3. Our first print is now complete and we have success look at that this is with the printer with absolutely no modifications or no fine tuning this is from the install video basically I published a few days ago so this is very nice so now let's go ahead and print the uh, spool holder that came on the SD card uh, with the printer so I printed the same cube in blue just to see uh, better than having a black uh, finish and basically you cannot tell the difference. This, this is the Ender 3, this is the Tarantula Pro and uh, even if I move closer, look at that. Very, very nice and again my Tarantula is stuck. I did not do any modifications. Now I inserted the SD card that came with the printer and there was only one file, as you can see, called support. So I'm guessing this is the, uh, the uh, spool uh, holder. And if we look at the first layer, that seems to be the case. And uh, so far, so good. So I don't know how long the file will take to print here. But, uh, well, we'll see. It looks like uh, Amherst or Tivo set a skirt in the file settings as we can see here yeah there is a skirt around uh, this part which uh, I like to uh, prime the nozzle so we are now printing the spool holder and it looks like my uh, high-tech setup is working fine for now but soon to be replaced by uh, something uh, that will look uh, better now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before but I like this display a lot it is very crisp and you can also adjust the uh, brightness. Now I noticed that the 60% that we modified here is back in here, which is not what I want. I want here 100%. So I did slow down the, uh, the whole print. So let's go back to 100 here because it is printing slowly. So back to main screen, info screen. Now we are back at 100%. So the print head is going a little bit faster now. As you can see, the print got interrupted here. After printing the test cube in blue to have a better visual, I'm now doing my ultimate test, which is the night chess piece, which we will see uh, in about uh, two and a half hours. It's interesting to see here on the display that the tarantula has two digits after the period, unlike the Ender 3 that has only one. So now we can see exactly at what layer uh, the printer is at. My first attempt at printing a chess piece and as you can see I have a layer shift problem that I need to investigate. I want to address the layer shifting problem I had 
And if you look at the part here, this is the way it was. So this is here the y-axis. So as you can see on the x-axis, there was no shifting. So it was easy here to try to figure out the problem. And it was entirely my fault. So if, you, if I take the camera, so we have the y-axis over here. So the problem was here. When I did my assembly video, again, I was so focused on the camera that uh, there are two screws here on the sprocket. And one is against the flat, right here, against the flat part of the, of the shaft. And I forgot to tighten the screw here. So at some point, this shifted, and that gave us the shift here on the y-axis. So like I said, entirely my fault. And here is my favorite uh, test, the uh, chess piece, the knight. This is with the Ender 3. It is finished, as you can see, for my chess set. This is with the Tarantula Pro. But again, I had a print failure, like I showed before. But if you look at the surface, it is amazing. Look at that. Look at the finish here. This is very impressive, but obviously, I have a problem, probably the control board, because the print cannot finish. And this is valid for prints above two hours. The cubes had no problems to, uh, to print though, but not the, uh, the night. As you can see, I connected the 3D printer to my laptop using the cable provided. So I'm trying here to print from Cura via USB. The chest piece where we had the print interruption after about uh, two hours of print. So now we are at layer 5, we just uh, started. So I'm trying to here to uh, identify the problem with this uh, print uh, interruption after uh, two hours. After successfully printing via USB, I decided to use a more recent and faster SD card. And it looks like we're going to have a successful print with no interruption this time. I'm just showing here the time it took so far to print the uh, chess piece. I have the two prints side by side here. This is the Tarantula Pro and this is the Ender 3. And uh, with the light reflection, look at that. You see here the uh, vertical lines. I always get that with my Ender 3. Still very good surface, but look at the Tarantula. Very, very impressive for a printer of that price. I am very impressed. This is it. We're at the end of this uh, video. It's a lot longer than I thought, but I had a few issues like you saw. I could have just edited out uh, my problem and just say that my printer was perfect, but no, because the errors uh, or the mistakes I make, you could make the same mistakes also. And I wanted to share with you, for example, the my shifting, like we saw before uh, on the y-axis, you might have the same problem. So all of my problems with my print interruptions, and I tried to print the spool holder twice, as you can see here, the chest set, we saw that. The problem was the SD card. So you have to be careful. I was using uh, like uh, older cards with my Ender 3 with no problem, but the control board in the Tarantula seems to require a faster card so when i switched to a sandisk ultra i only had like a, i had like an eight gigabyte i don't use in my cameras anymore so i used that and ultra and it worked perfectly no print interruption and i even did a usb print to try and this is the usb print here of the chess piece and this is the sd card so no issues whatsoever so guys uh, be careful with the SD card that you use. Uh, it could cause a problem. So uh, my next video will be a comparison between the Tarantula Pro, the new model that I have here, and the Ender 3. Ender 3 Pro, they're very similar with a few, a few differences, I should say, that I'm going to talk about. There are major differences between the two or the three printers. And I want to share my opinion. I do have the Ender 3. So I'll put them side by side and we'll do a comparison. But for now, all I can say is that for the price, the Tarantula Pro looks great and the print quality is also great. So thank you guys for watching. And as always, if you have any questions about the printer or what I did with the printer or the assembly, just 
send me a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a great day. Goodbye, guys.